That our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. But be transformed by the renewing. The, that word means to exchange. Exchange your way of thinking for his way of thinking. Exchange your attitude for his attitude. Exchange how you speak for the way he speaks. You see, I, like I've told you before, God created the heavens and the earth and everything that there is by speaking. But yet, a lot of times we act as if our words don't have power. And they do. In fact, they are eternal. The Bible says that you'll give an account for every jot and tittle that comes out of your mouth. That's a whole lot of jot and tittles. It is. But it can be a good thing if we'll allow it today. Speak as if it matters. Words have power. Look at Ephesians 4, 17. Back right up. I'm standing right here in Ephesians 4. I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord. If you look at the New King James, it says testify in the Lord. What Paul is actually saying there is, is that Jesus gave me this revelation. Everything I'm just telling you about, Jesus gave me the revelation. I am testifying of Jesus. That's what he is saying. He says, I insist on it that you no longer live as the Gentiles do, as the world does, and the futility of their thinking. You see, your thinking is flawed. Your thinking is incorrect. It's, uh, it's one of those things, and I remember uh, somebody teaching on it, you probably all know Proverbs 3, 5. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Seek God, and he will um, express that word. <coughs> Give you the desires of your heart. Exactly. Well, in Proverbs 2, it says, gain wisdom, gain, gain understanding, and it tells you why and all the benefits. Then it turns around and tells you, don't lean on your own understanding. In other words, you might gain a lot of wisdom. You might gain a lot of knowledge. You might gain a lot of understanding. But if it's in the flesh, or if it's just you, when it comes to actually living like God wants you to, it may be of no value. Seek God. His ways. And then as you apply His understanding, as you exchange it, then you will benefit from that. Amen. That's better preaching than I'm getting amens. I don't know what to do. Amen. Amen. Just think. All right. As long as you think. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, He's preaching good. He's preaching good. See, that helps me. I was watching the Olympics, you know, and uh, you, have you ever noticed, especially in gymnastics, all everybody's sitting there. I mean, these people have practiced for 15 years. They give their life to it. They've done everything. But the team is saying, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You know, I mean, they have practiced and worked. But it's that encouragement. I mean, you know, they're trying to elevate them up. Y'all might want to take that as a little advice. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs>
Ephesians 4, 25. This is where it gets tough. Through about uh, 27 there. And I've heard Tia quote this several times. Uh, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood. They word in there, falsehood. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Why does he all why does he follow up speaking truthfully with anger? And don't let the sun go down. And don't give the devil a place. Why does he follow that up with that? Let me tell you why. If you have good friends, or maybe I should say acquaintances, you will tell them the truth. If, if this is hundred percent, you will tell them. 90, but you won't tell them 100. <clears throat> you won't sit down with them and say, you know, Eddie, you have this problem in your life, and it's sin, and it's holding you back. Yeah, you need to work on that. Most people won't do that. They'll, you know, they'll get up that 90% and say, well, it's going to be all right. It'll all work out. I mean, we'll, you know, I know you got this problem, but everybody's got problems. It's going to be okay. Well, actually, that's not okay. Amen. And that's not how it's supposed to work. Amen. Because if you go ahead and speak the truth, yeah. somebody's going to be angry. Yes, right. That's why it follows up with that. <laughs> but the Bible says, if you get angry, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And don't give the devil a foothold. Because if you let the bitterness mm -hmm. and the strife and the anger yeah. stay in there, then the devil's got a place to work. And he can start talking to you. Telling you all these different things. For this reason, the church is not healed, is not well, is not whole, is not delivered. You say, well, Eddie, I don't quite see that. How do you get that? I'm glad you asked. Turn to James chapter 5. Speak as if it matters. Words have power. I've said that a couple of times. I'm wanting you to get that. James chapter 5, verse 13 through uh, 18. Uh, another chock full of power. You could, Ephesians 4 and 5, uh, truly a person could minister on the remainder of their life. James chapter 5, a person could minister on the rest of their life. That's how full it is. I mean, God's word is. Absolutely amazing. I was talking to you yesterday. If a person can't look at the Word of God and know that you have 66 books written by some 40 writers over 1,600 years of history, and it all tied together so intricately, I mean, it's unbelievable if you will just get in there. James 5.13 is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is any one of you happy? Let him sing psalms of praise. Is any of you sick? He should call on the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. James doesn't give an option there. It says it will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If, if is put there because it's not always the case. Just because somebody is sick doesn't mean there's sin in their life. So don't get under condemnation. It says if. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Here we go. Therefore, this is why you should do this. Is why therefore is there. This is how you operate this. This is what you're supposed to do because of what I just said. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Righteous man there in context is a man who walks in forgiveness. A man who walks where he has confessed his sins, asked to be prayed for, he's prayed for and healed. A righteous man, a man who walks in forgiveness. And then James goes on to give us an example. 
And he picks an example in the Old Testament just to emphasize what power you have. Because as powerful as Elijah was, he's not under the new covenant. And I realize people don't understand that, but that's the truth. It says Elijah was a man just like us. Nothing special. He prayed earnestly. Now earnestly, there again, that could be a sermon about what that word really means. But for the context of what we're talking about and what James is talking about, earnestly would include a man who is walking in forgiveness, a man who is walking in right standing with God. Righteous. Right standing with God, meaning that he has his life in order with God. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. The reason that is put in there is to emphasize how important it is for us as believers to pray for one another because when we pray, if we line ourselves up with the Word of God, what we pray will be. take the word of God out of context and not find that to be true. Well, the question is this. How do we as a body of believers stop the insanity? How do we stop showing up on Sunday mornings people sitting here with needs and problems and they go out and Monday through Saturday they, they struggle and deal with all these things and don't misunderstand me. There will be troubles in this life when we operate, even when we operate according to the Word of God. There will be troubles because the Bible says there will be. Uh, there will be problems that come up because the Bible says there will be. There will be conflicts amongst the brethren because the Bible says there will be. But there are answers for those things. And we walk through those things. And conflicts and problems are opportunities to grow, to learn more about God, to see Him work in our lives. They are opportunities. We need to look at it that way. How do we get to where we can fully realize these things? People are always saying, and I've said it a bunch of times, and today is, uh, I mean, we've been doing a lot of prep work, getting ready to do something. Well, this is the day, officially, that we can quit circling the mountain. This is the day. There's a path that comes off of that circle we've been taking. And it might be a mountain path. It might be rocky. It might be rough. Uh, but it will be good for us. And we can start to walk out Ephesians 4 and 5 and James 5. We can walk these things out. How are we going to do that?